Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we're going to take a look at good old WEP versus WPA on 802.11n environments and a little bit about performance. The whys and whats. I've read and heard many variations that WPA will outperform WEP and I've heard the exact opposite. I've heard sometimes that WEP will outperform WPA. I think it all depends on the vendor or salesperson you happen to run into that day. So a little homework. Maybe we find out that 802.11n standard will specify that you can only achieve higher speeds when using WPA2 and AES. Otherwise all devices will be throttled back to 802.11g speeds of 54 megabits per second. Anybody who's ever done throughput testing uh, with 802.11g and 54 meg can probably tell you that there's no way you're going to get 54 out of 54, but nevertheless, that's what it's rated at. Quick goal of this test is to prove or disprove this theory. Now here's a little screenshot of my Linksys Cisco access point, and I changed it to WEP. And when I did that, it popped up this box. Warning, warning, your wireless end device will only operate at wireless G data rates with the encryption type you have chosen, which was WEP. Please select WPA2 personal, blah, 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 blah. So let's see how true that is, or not. <laughs> Setup. Got a netbook, here he is. I've got an Ethernet cable plugged into my Cisco Linksys E3000 running a default configuration. There's only one little thing I do uh, in 5.8 that I'll talk about a little bit later, but uh, pretty well default. And then from this E3000, we have Wi Fi talking to this Dell Studio 1737, and it's got a 2.4 and 5.8 uh, wireless card in it. It's the Intel 5100. Okay, so it's all fairly typical stuff. A little test equipment. I'm using Path Test, which is that iPerf replacement. Uh, this becomes the Path Test client. This becomes the Path Test server. I've also got a Fluke Air Magnet Spectrum XT to make sure the spectrum is not all mucked up and skewing my test. So here we go, 2.4 gig. We did a, an RF check and basically poked around. And because it's set for uh, auto magic, it automatically chose channel one. So for the people who use automatic channel selection in their APs. Um, doesn't always seem to work out. <laughs> uh, here we go. We can see there's uh, two access points now on one. This guy chose it, but you know, in all fairness, there is quite a bit of room between them, so it really shouldn't hurt it too much. But for the people using automatic channel selection, you might want to validate or verify that it's not picking uh, channels that are currently in use with a lot of energy on that channel. All right. Off we go. Test number one. The netbook is cabled, like I said, to the E3000. Wireless is disabled. I didn't want it squeaking through that wireless card. So he's a path test client, so he uses dash C routine. And there's the IP address of the Dell, the server. And we have a double dash, you can't see it very well there, but it's a double dash by die, bi-directional, and a double dash TCP. That's going to do a TCP test, and it's going to do an upload, it's going to stop, and then it's going to do a download. This is not simultaneous. We don't want simultaneous tests. The E3000 access point, it's configured for WEP64. There's my passphrase, and I've configured the 5 GHz radio with this SSID, 5 GHz, and 2.4 GHz radio was configured with 2.4 GHz. That way I can see which one I'm currently connected to. Okay. Using auto channel selection, showed you that already, and auto channel width. I'm letting all that auto magic stuff go for me. The Dell Studio is wirelessly connected, and that's it. Not even no Ethernet cable connected to this guy, and he's my server. Here's my first test results: test one, two, three, four, five, and you can see the average upstream, 11.16 meg, and downstream 10.69, which is fairly typical. Moving on to test number two, we change from WEP to WPA. And basically just the passphrase change, not really nothing else spectacular to note. And here's the results. We've got test one, two, three, four, five, and now way, way more throughput. Forty-eight point eight nine meg up and twenty-four meg down. Woohoo! I guess that pretty well says it all, huh? <laughs> but now we're gonna move on to five gigahertz, because uh, uh, people ask me about five quite a bit. And Again, I'm using Spectrum XT to check this out, and of course, it happened to pick the first channel, which is my office router's uh, frequency being used, and I don't want it to argue and conflict, so I've moved it over to channel 48, and you can see there's the 
Cisco Linksys, and then this is my office. So again, auto channel selection failed me. It picked the first channel. I didn't want it to, so off we are at 48. Okay. Other than that, didn't do too much. WEP, same same deal with WEP. WEP 64, same passphrase, and this time I connected to the 58 radio, and here's the results. So I had uh, 12 downstream, 12.196 megabits, and 10.7. Uh, downstream. So I'm sorry, I don't know if I said that wrong the first time. 12.196 up and 10.7 down. There we go. Now the fun stuff. We're going to change to WPA2. Off we go. And whoa, 75 down and 52. <laughs> I said it backwards again. 75 up and 52 down. So obviously an increase in performance was seen. Now that we've done all these tests and everything's muddled in your head and mine, I've done a summary chart. And there we go. So 2.4 gig WEP 11 and 10. 2.4 gig WPA2 is 48 and 24. So you can see a huge difference in performance. Same deal with 5 WEP and 5 WPA2. And of course for the managers in the group who want to see pretty little charts, there's your chart. And you can see the huge difference between WEP and WPA, and um, actually a bit of a difference between 5 gig and 2.4 as well. So there you go, folks. Hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.